Hey everybody, welcome back to Dirt Grease Outdoor Peace. So we're going to start part three of the Goldwing project. And I just took the uh, intake boots, you'll see it in the intro. I showed you um, how I pulled the old O-ring out and uh, clean up the groove real good. I had to clean out the inside of the inside of this um, spigot here. And uh, so I just used this little silk glide to stick the O-ring in that groove and to uh, keep it in there. And uh, so I'm going to set the carburetor assembly in there. And then I might double check the book. As, as far as I know, um, I can just go ahead and uh, hold it up and, and put the boots on, the uh, hook the rubber boots up and then hook these up. Um, I don't see any kind of uh, mount on the bottom of that carburetor assembly. Uh, I'm going to make sure that timing plug that I had loosened up is tight. And, um, yeah, I'll see if we can make a little more progress. Thanks for clicking on the video. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I appreciate everybody being here. Thanks. Secret to get this on. Um... Might have to go from the other side. Guess I might be able to take this, take that off. I don't know what that is. It's pretty close right there. Get the bolts for that.
sure my o-rings are in place which this one fell out oh you bitch I had to put more silvite in it So now I want to lift this up and double check the o-rings, those look good. So I'm going to get this, just a little more time, yep that looks good. Hopefully I got enough slack to pick that up on the other side and check my o-rings. I guess Honda was really hot for these little acorn cap bolts in 1978. I don't know if this, if this particular bike was one that came with all the Saddlebags and everything on it. I don't even know enough about them. To know if it was. I don't know if I've ever worked on a gold. Yeah, I guess I have worked on a gold wing a long time ago. When I went to trike school in uh, Michigan... There was only, I don't know if there was another guy or if it was just me that was there for Harleys. It was in a, it was in a guy's garage. And uh, he did conversions. The instruction came from Lehman Trikes in uh, Canada. So it was just kind of a central location for everybody to meet up and uh, the first thing that we did was a Honda Goldwing conversion so I helped them on that I don't know if there was like maybe four of us that did that took the class and then we did a, a Harley one so it was like when we were working on the Honda all these other guys were like, you know, right in it and just, you know, they knew how to tear it all apart and everything. And I was just kind of watching and helping here and there. But when it came to the Harley, it was uh, me and one other guy that did most of the work on it. He had, he had Harley experience also. I don't remember when that was. 
Must have been... Man. 2000... Five or six, maybe? Almost 20 years ago. Okay, I'm gonna snug the bolts on the other side. Okay, well it's new day, we're back here again, and I've uh, been kind of figure out this stuff as we go along. I had these rubber caps in the parts, and they weren't in a Honda bag, they were just in a plastic bag. So I don't, maybe he got them from aftermarket or something, but I uh, was flipping through the book looking at the pictures, and I figured out that they go on the back of these um, uh, mechanisms for the choke it must uh, protect these springs so I'm gonna get these while well you guys can see that but I need to uh, I had to get you guys in a I guess I got that one on there Yeah, that one's in. So I'll do the other side. I will try to get you guys a position here where you can see in there I gotta do the throttle cables and the choke cable. Maybe down here. So I'll put this other cap on. Uh, I'm just gonna look in the book real quick and make sure I'm getting these cables on the right side of the frame.
Well, I can see a mark where the throttle cables were on the back side of the frame. So, where they rubbed on the frame, so I guess those go there. I gotta figure out the choke cable, yep. So I guess that just gets tightened up. There must be, yeah, there's an upper, there's an upper adjustment for the cable length um, up by the air cleaner. So I guess that's going to go like that. And then I can get this one hooked. that like that and there's a there's an adjustment at the handlebar too yeah I'm gonna have to take the uh, to take the switch housing apart up top and he wants me to lube the cable, so. Um, I could take it out. Yeah, I think I'll just lube them from the top instead of trying to pull these cables out and, and force it up. So that looks like a eight millimeter. No, it's 10 millimeter. What the hell is the matter with me? I need another one to hold the top. I just wanted to make sure I could get that broke loose. So the choke cable. Yes, I'm trying to. No, if I go. Yeah, if I go the same way, it doesn't reach. So this one must go on the inside of the frame.
tighten down our little holder. And fuel shut off that I took off to get the carburetors in there. The O-rings are there. I don't know where that hose is supposed to go. And I don't like the way those, oh yeah, the O-ring already moved, so. I'm gonna stick the O-rings to the bottom of that thing. Nice. The ring stuck on there. Oh my god. Yes. This thing is a struggle sometimes. Okay. Got that back on. Now, it must go on the bottom of this front carburetor. That's as far as it'll reach. So I think instead of a vacuum petcock, it's got a vacuum. This this thing will. Uh, Shut the fuel off when it's not running. In case the petcock sticks. It's like Harley has a well back when they back when they had carburetors on them, they had a vacuum petcock. So the when when the engine wasn't running they the fuel wouldn't flow through the petcock. Okay. So now I gotta tighten this tighten tighten this bracket back up. I had to move this bracket out of the way so I could get a screwdriver down through there to get to that front bolt on that fuel shut off. So the throttle cables are on. Yeah, the cables definitely need lube because it's really sticky feeling choke cables on so figure out what the next step is that might be uh, might be putting the fuel tank in try to figure that out I think I'm just gonna put some tape over that intake for now I think he still has that base of the air cleaner that bolts to that okay so i'm gonna put the fuel tank in i'm gonna jack this up pull this rear wheel out
take this other shock off. That's what I was running into last time. Why did it have to make it that tight? Thank you. 
Vamos. Come on. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is... Lube up that clutch cable and then put a little bit on this harness here. It's close. It is close. Why do they have to make that thing so damn tight? What in the hell am I hitting now? Did it go in? Just, I wasn't even looking. Did you guys see it go in? I'll have to look at the footage. My God, why did I have to make that thing so freaking tight? Oh, I guess this... Maybe I was fighting this wiring harness. I don't even think it's supposed to go between the frame. You know how I am. This is how I was. How I was taught to do stuff. You gotta double check it a couple times at least just to make sure. It's hard to see in there. Yeah, it's definitely in there. So, push that in. Yeah, and I was trying to jam the wiring harness. You guys are still like, what the hell is this guy talking about? The wiring harness from when I tore it apart was on the inside of the tank. And there is a little relief in the tank but it's not for the wiring it's for the frame so then i saw this big notch back here so um yeah now i gotta just get all the tape off of there it looks like i got it in there without scratching it that's a that's a a run or a flaw right there i'm gonna scuff it a little bit right there but that's not bad. That is not an easy tank to get in there. I mean, they must have just... They just bulged this thing out everywhere they had a chance just to get extra fuel in it. I mean, 
Look at how close that is to the frame. So I just I taped everything up real good. The guy took the time to clean this up and paint it, and I didn't want to scratch it. So, I will get that bolt started up here. I better get my tape out of there. Sorry about the. I'm trying to get the light in the best position. Um, I was just, you know, looking at the other projects that I have to do in the garage, I'm just kind of reevaluating my light, and uh, so I might have to uh, add some more lights in here. I gotta be able to get up there and see what the hell is going on. Yeah, you know, I don't think this hose is supposed to be in here. There's, there's got to be more than that. Okay, so I got a isolator for the bottom of the tank. I I didn't see it in the parts. I almost think that maybe it was it was on there when the guy took it. Maybe it maybe it was junk and fell apart or maybe it wasn't on there, I don't know, but I found one on eBay that was pretty cheap. So I got that put in place and uh gonna slide this gas tank in there again. How am I doing over there? I think it's 
hitting that new piece of rubber I put in there. She's tight in there now. I'm just gonna spray that part of the frame there. That it's tight on that piece that I just put in there. Now if I can get all the tape off of there. things tight in there. I don't know if you remember uh, when I put it in before without that piece on the bottom that thing was just rocking back and forth in there so yeah good there it's up in the front there That old one was all plugged up. So we got a new genuine pet cock for this fuel valve. So I put a little silk glide on those O-rings there. Just nice to have something on there and instead of being completely dry it's not going to hurt the fuel at all Just kidding. Nice screwdriver because you can tighten the screws from the next county. I can sneak that fuel line in there with a new 
fuel filter. Um, it's going to replace the hose. The old clamps don't fit on the new hose. This is the old hose, and it's all cracked and dry rotted. And I was going to try to use these clamps on there, but this uh, rubber hose is just a little bit thicker wall and these clamps won't fit on there so I think I'll just try to round up some squeeze clamps uh, that one we might have to uh, might have to put a screw clamp on that one change my mind again I got a bunch of these squeeze clamps and that's a nice fit on there. Real, that's like perfect on there. So I think when I go to put it on the fuel tank, um, maybe I won't crimp it for now, just in case I got to pull something back apart. But if you don't have these special pliers, these are Nipex or Knipex, however you say it. Um, if you don't have these, you can use an end cut pair of dikes, but you'd have to just um, take that real sharp edge off of it. So just squeeze, squeeze this side a little bit, squeeze this side a little bit. Yeah, and that's that's really tight. And this screw goes through the bottom of the gas tank. And there's a feed arrow on there. So we'll just send that through. Why would that be easy? I'll go over there and put the nut on. The hole is full of paint. Sorry, I might as well show you guys what I'm doing over there. Looks like, yeah, I could probably trim just a little bit off of that hole. I think I bought these for PEX, but it works good on rubber. Well, I gotta take a little more than that. Dropping down in the jaw. Yeah, see, really nice cut. And they're cheap. I think these, these things are less than 20 bucks, I think. So I'll get another one of those clamps. That's probably the only downfall of these clamps is uh, you have to have room to crimp them. Uh, they, they use a clamp similar to this on the Harleys. I think I talked about it in the one video. Which it's a lot, it's a lot cleaner looking. And it doesn't chew up the hose. So if I can get this from here. Yep. I'm assuming I'm assuming this goes up to the air box, but I don't have that. And
Okay. Looks good. This is where to go. Yeah, so I gotta cut a hose from the outside of the pump to the carburetor inlet. Uh, check the length on the petcock side. Yeah, I could trim a little bit on this side too. Just for right now, I'm gonna, anything that I leave loose or I want to check again, I put a piece of tape on it. So just in case I gotta pull that tank back apart for some reason, I'm just gonna put a piece of tape on here. Pre-squeeze. One side, and hope that I can get it on there, and then maybe just barely have room to get the other one on the bottom. There we go. Okay, now hopefully. Put these in there. Just barely. Oh, I didn't cut. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit. I cut it too freaking short. What a dumbass. Yeah, that wasn't coming off of there. Or might not come off of there at all. How did I do that? Okay, take two. Longer fuel line. A little uh, pre pinch. Before you pinch the other side, make sure the hose fits this time. Hey, what do you know? Look at that. Now, what I gotta do? Undo the hose so I can crimp it? I'm doing everything twice, three times on this thing. Squeeze that a little bit. Let's see if I can spin that clamp back around. Squeeze this in. Did it work? Will it work? Okay. I don't know if you guys could see what I was doing there, but crimped nose on there and the fitting on the carburetor. I could put this back end back together, at least 
get it back on two wheels. Um, yeah, I think I'll look in the book and see how that fender goes in there. I could put that, uh, put the inner fender in there and look and see how this, um, outer, the chrome fender goes back in and, uh, probably put the wheel back in. Uh, the other thing I got to do on this is, uh, flush the brakes and, uh, make sure the calipers are free. I think the, the front calipers are off because they were stuck. So I've got to, I've either got to take them apart and clean them or lube them and try to exercise the pistons a little bit. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but this, when this thing sat for a long time, there was uh, wires up in here that were chewed. So while this was apart before, um, it was last last year when it first came here and I tore it apart. I uh, I fixed all those wires in there and I I cut them, re-soldered them together and put the heat shrink on the wire before I soldered it. So that's all fixed in there and. Uh, then I gotta put the horns on. There's some uh, chrome covers that go on here. I got new spark plugs for it that I gotta do. Uh, I gotta check the points. I should write that on the lift. I don't think that's on there. Try to keep rolling on it. Oh, it must go on the back of the battery box there. There's nothing on the tank. So I guess we'll put the... Uh, this brake off to the side. We'll put the inner fender in, which that just slips over these tabs. easy but it's not there we 
we go. And then these pop over those mounts. Ouch! So those pop over the mounts and then the, the chrome fender, I can take these bolts out. And the chrome fender goes inside of here. Yeah, I think I might as well put the rear wheel back in there. washer on there? Hmm. Have to look in the book. I had these bolts in here. I'll take those out. The thing is, I gotta make sure that that uh, gotta make sure that that bar doesn't go in there somewhere. That that hoop that goes on the back that must go. Like I said, I have, uh, this thing's been apart for so long, I forgot everything. And I've never worked on one of these before. Yeah, so that goes on the outside. Okay, so we can do, we can tighten up those, those pieces, and then put the bolts on the inside. Might be able to see in there. Drop it down a little bit.
only one way to find out, right? Let's put these in. There we go. No, I got to see which way that goes in and look for pins. Put the pin in. The spring The spring holds that pin in. There is a. I found the pins in the parts. There's a groove in the middle of that pin. So you have to hold this spring down, and push this pin in. Right there. And then that. Uh, Yeah, the spring holds that in place. Of course, you can't see anything. Kind of a interesting setup there. But I'm just going to slip this through here. I'll jack it up a little bit so I can spin the wheel. Oh, it works. my bolts aren't tight or anything but um yeah it works that's uh i mean it should i'm gonna flush it which that's gonna help get some fresh fluid in there and uh and then just using it is going to free that up. It doesn't look too bad in there, but... It's not great. A lot of times this stuff never gets changed. That would be a tip that I would give you guys on, uh, you know, motorcycles, your cars, anything, is to uh, flush the brake system. Especially, you know, anything that doesn't have a silicone brake fluid is, uh, it, it's called hydroscopic. It absorbs fluid. And even, like, if you had an old bottle of brake fluid up on the shelf, it only has a shelf life of so long when it's closed. And then once it's open, you only have, like, I think they tell you, a few weeks to use it while it's open because it it absorbs water. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little research on this. Um, but as far as I know, you can I can either draw that out or I can empty the reservoir and then put silicone brake fluid dot five right in the reservoir and then pull that through and kind of flush everything out um, the silicone won't react with the rubber that's in there the rubber that's in there is for the the dot three system the silicone can go in that no problem but you can't go the other way around you can't take a dot five silicone system and put a dot three or four in it because it'll eat eat all the seals out of it so i'm gonna just do my research on that and make sure but that is that is what i did on the 57 
I put a new master cylinder on it and then I just filled it up with silicone brake fluid and uh, opened the bleeders up and I used my uh, gravity bleeder, my uh, Mighty Vac. I don't, I don't think I actually had to put vacuum on it. I think all I did was use the, uh, the Mighty Vac comes with a nice little plastic container with a clear tube on it. So I put that on the bleeder and then just let the fluid run out and once it starts running clear you can shut the bleeder and uh, check the brakes and bleed them if you have to but on a on a system like that in the car you usually don't have to and on the bikes you know the master cylinder um, should be above the uh, the caliper which on this one it isn't, so I'll probably have to, uh, I probably will have to either gra uh, vacuum bleed that or pressure bleed it. But I think I'm gonna cut this one off here. I don't know exactly where we're at with time. I know I spent a, quite a bit of time screwing around with that. Uh, um, getting the fuel tank ready to go in. Um, you know, basically, what takes me the most time is just not knowing this bike very very well and having to look everything up, having to look in the book every time. But uh, we're getting there, you know, it's back, uh, it's back on two wheels. Um, we're checking the brakes, fenders in it. I'm basically just leaving this out of the way right now so that uh, I can work on the caliper and get to the bleeder a little more of course that's that doesn't really give me very much room but it's I don't need to put the battery in it right now anyway so yeah so I'm just gonna sign off for now just in case I'm gonna I gotta look at all the uh, the footage that I have but I want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in and watching and uh, stay tuned for the next one I hope uh, please take a minute, go down and hit that like button for me. Click subscribe if you're not subscribed already to help support my channel. Um, if you can, uh, if you can take a, a minute and share the video, you know, share it, um, share it with a friend, share it with somebody, you know, on Facebook, uh, through email, um, just, uh, try to, I think that's, the best thing you can do is like, comment, subscribe, and share. Um, I would appreciate everybody that's watching to uh, leave me a comment on uh, what you're working on, what your latest project is, what your, uh, what is your to-do list for 2024. Uh, I also want to wish everybody, uh, I think I said Merry Christmas on the last video, but I would, uh, say, I'll tell you again, I hope everybody had a good a good Christmas and uh, a happy new year. Hopefully everybody gets their year off to a good start. And uh, yeah, so I will see you on the next one. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll be back for part four, I believe. We'll be back. Remember to uh, get out and play in the dirt, work in the grease. Make sure you get out there and enjoy that outdoor piece. Thanks for watching everybody, really appreciate it.